This year's MLB trade deadline is just a few short days away, and with some moves already made, the time leading up to August 2nd is going to be completely hectic. We've seen some exciting deadlines in the past, especially last year's, where we saw the Cubs dismantle their core and the Dodgers pull off an absolute blockbuster for two national stars. Last year, I covered the 2015 deadline and the craziness that occurred there seven years ago. I figured let's make it an annual tradition and cover a different deadline every year. This year, let's jump two seasons forward and cover the 2017 trade deadline, because there's plenty to talk about from that year. But before we get into that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Roman. Guys, you know how when you're wearing a great outfit, everything just looks right and your confidence is soaring? You can walk into a room knowing you're on your A game? Well, if you've been struggling with PE, Roman can give you that same feeling in the bedroom. We all know that change doesn't happen without action. Whether you're looking for gains at the gym or a better experience in the bedroom, there's never any shame in showing up for yourself and for your health. So, if you're dealing with these issues, don't ignore those issues. Instead, face them head on with Roman. We like to talk ball and have a lot of fun on my channel, so I know that if you guys are anything like me, you probably dread wasting time in boring waiting rooms, then having to spend money on a copay, then insurance is a hassle. You know how it goes. For all my guys out there dealing with PE, I have to tell you about Roman. Roman swipes are clinically proven to help you last longer in bed, no prescription needed. PE treatments are safe, effective, and used by millions of men, and it all comes to you with free two-day shipping. So go to GetRoman.com Jolly today, and if approved, you'll get $10 off your first order. And this can be for any of their products, not just their swipes. That's GetRoman.com slash Jolly. Now let's get into today's video. Baseball fans were shocked when the first blockbuster deal of that year hit the media outlets a full 18 days before the actual deadline. It had been long speculated that Jose Quintana of the White Sox would be a marquee trade piece, being that he was having a fantastic season for a Southside team 11 games under 500 and in dead last in the AL Central at the time of the trade. Quintana also had three years left on his contract beyond 2017, making him all the more lucrative as an asset. While there were many suitors for his services, the White Sox made the surprising decision to make a deal with their crosstown rival, the Chicago Cubs. When you analyze the package, though, this decision becomes a lot more obvious. A year after offering a behemoth group of prospects for Aldis Chapman, general manager Theo Epstein decided to go all in once again to try and get his Cubs to go back to back. The Cubs agreed to give up their number one and number four prospects in Eloy Jimenez and Dylan Cease, in addition to two more prospects to acquire Quintana for their rotation. Quintana Quintana rounded out the hole in the Cubs' starting pitcher depth in a solid second half, though in his following seasons, he'd never maintain an ERA below four again. At the time, it was a win for the Cubs, but as for the White Sox return, both Jimenez and Cease have become integral pieces of their current core. Eloy has battled injury and hasn't played over 60 games since his 2019 rookie season, but along the way, he's won a silver slugger. Cease ended up becoming the key piece, really coming into his own over the past two seasons. He's currently in heavy contention to win this year's AL Cy Young, while Quintana is currently dealing for Pittsburgh and could be traded yet again. The baseball world was officially in a frenzy, but lucky for them, things were getting just started. Let's turn things back over to the National League, where one of the most prominent buyers would be the Washington Nationals. Having made the playoffs in three of the last five seasons and sitting comfortably with a nine and a half game lead in their division, Washington was focused on upgrading their bullpen. They found help in the last place Oakland A's, who were prepping for one of their usual grand sell-offs. Though he was very effective just a season prior, the Nationals agreed to send Blake Trinan and two prospects, number 12 Jesus Lazardo and number six Sheldon Nussi, the A's would make them regret this, unlocking Trinan's potential and turning him into an all-star closer by next season, one that would end up receiving Cy Young votes. Luzardo is still figuring things out, but he's doing so in Miami for the Marlins, as he was shipped off straight up for Starling Marte in 2021. But in return, the Nationals got two huge arms for their bullpen in Sean Doolittle and Ryan Madsen. As much as it hurt in retrospect to lose Trinan, this move did fix the Nationals' bullpen. Both those guys pitched to an ERA under 2.5 and handled meaningful postseason innings for the Nationals, especially Doolittle, who stepped into the closer's role and secured 21 saves in the second half alone. Doolittle would make the All-Star team in 2018 and has pitched in Washington every season except for 2021, so kind of a win-win for both sides, which is cool. The Yankees, who had made a previous trade for Garrett Cooper, were not finished yet either, prepping to make much bigger moves than their quiet first acquisition. They also decided to give the lowly White Sox a call, who had plenty of key pieces on their dysfunctional roster. With the mediocre performance of Chase Headley at third base and the bullpen in general, the Yankees sought re enforcements. The White Sox were a match made in heaven as the Yankees were able to acquire a consistent power hitter and sure-handed glove in Todd Frazier, as well as old friend David Robertson and new friend Tommy Canely. Frazier steadily transitioned between teams and had some huge moments in the second half of this year. Robertson returned to his prime form in his setup role and pitched into 2018 for New York as well. Canely, figured to be a minor part of this deal, was great in 2017 and would pitch in the Bronx for three years after this as well. The Yankees did extremely well in this deal, and in the trade, they parted with Todd 
Tyler Clippard, as well as number 10 prospect Ian Clarkin and number three prospect Blake Rutherford. Many thought that Rutherford would be a huge piece for Chicago, but these prospects would never amount to much for the White Sox, and Clippard would throw just 10 innings for the White Sox in 2017. This was mostly a salary dump for Chicago as they geared up for another rebuild. But the onslaught of this kickoff week to the deadline was not finished yet, not even close, because the Arizona Diamondbacks were about to acquire what would turn out to be the best trade piece available at this year's deadline. They connected with the Detroit Tigers, who were six games under 500, with plenty of pieces to deal with. The highest price tag belonged to their DH, JD Martinez, who owned a team leading 16 home runs and 165 OPS plus at the half. The D backs put together a package for the most lucrative rental on the market, sending their number four prospect, Dabo Lugo, and number 15 prospect, Sergio Alcantara. As you probably know by now, the Tigers didn't get much out of either of these guys, while the Diamondbacks rode the flaming hot bat of JD Martinez to 93 wins and their first playoff berth in six years. Martinez homered 29 times in just 65 games, including a four homer game against the Los Angeles Dodgers, and he led all MLB hitters in home runs and OPS plus in the final two months of the season. Safe to say, I think Arizona fleeced Detroit in this one. In the second week since the first major deal for Quintana, the transactions continued to pour in. This includes a pair of interesting moves from the Seattle Mariners, who were second in the American League West and a 500 team on July 20th. I covered these moves in depth on my DePoto trade history video, so if you've got the trade itch and want to learn more, definitely check out that video as well. The first of the pair of moves was definitely one of the worst of DePoto's tenure as a GM, though it wasn't really his fault. He'd deal a trio of prospects to acquire some bullpen help from the Marlins and David Phelps. Phelps did have a good year for both teams, but didn't even throw nine innings for Seattle in his time there. Dealt in the group of prospects to the Marlins was Pablo Lopez, who was then the number 29 prospect in Seattle's system, but has since turned into an all-star caliber starting pitcher. DePoto's second move came just a day after and is one of the most interesting traits to analyze in retrospect from the 2017 deadline. It was a one-for-one -one deal with the St. Louis Cardinals, who at the time were a surprising fourth place team in the National League Central and three games under 500. They were thought to be standing firmly pat, but decided to sell off some of their pitching depth for outfield talent. Marco Gonzalez, who had cups of coffee with the Cardinals from 2014 to 2017, was being sent to Seattle for an opportunity to be a major league starter. Seattle, desperate for pitching help, sent their number two prospect in this deal, outfielder Tyler O'Neill, believing in the potential of Gonzalez. O'Neill wouldn't debut until the following year, but quickly made himself a star in the Cardinals lineup, winning two gold gloves and receiving MVP votes in 2021. Gonzalez has been an incredibly reliable starter for Seattle since this trade and is having arguably his best season yet in 2022, while O'Neill has regressed to the mean and taken a step back this year. So you can really toss up who's the winner in this trade, it's as even as it gets. In terms of war, Gonzalez has 9.3 war, which narrowly etches out O'Neill's total of 8.9 war. The seas finally went calm for a couple of days after this trade, though rumors ran rampant. It wasn't until July 24th that the hot stove caught a flame again, albeit for another head-scratching deal that would only grow more confusing with time. The Minnesota Twins, who had been pin drop silent thus far, were a 49-49 team in third place in the AL Central, but instead of standing pat, they decided to make a push for some pitching help. The Braves were selling despite being second in the NL East because the Nationals had fully ran away with the division at this point. They had signed longtime Cardinal Jaime Garcia to a one-year deal in the offseason, in the likely event that he'd become a sought-after deadline rental. And that's exactly what happened. The Twins agreed to part ways with number 24 prospect Huascar Inoa in exchange for Garcia's services. It took him a while to arrive, but in 2021, Inoa became a huge piece of Atlanta's impressive starting rotation and was on his way to future success if not for a freak locker room mishap that resulted in a broken hand. He hasn't quite been the same since then. As for Garcia, his time in Minnesota isn't very well remembered. Why, you may ask? Well, we'll get back to him in just a second. A few days later, the lowly New York Mets, who were coming off back-to-back -back playoff berths, finally decided to start getting active as sellers with their 2017 season falling off the rails. They shopped longtime slugger Lucas Duda, who had previously had multiple 25 home run campaigns and received MVP votes in the past. They found a surprising suitor in the Tampa Bay Rays, who sat a game and a half out of the wildcard spot at three games over 500. The Rays, well known for fleecing other teams in their trades, might have been a bit farsighted in their deal with the Mets here. They sent an unranked relief prospect named Drew Smith to the Mets in this deal in exchange for the rental in Lucas Duda. He didn't have much success during his time at the Trap, but Drew Smith has blossomed into a reliable bullpen option for the Mets and has pitched for them every year since 2018. And like any good trade deadline, the best deals were saved for just under the wire. It's not every day you see a player traded twice in a week span, but that's exactly how this one kicks off with Jaime Garcia. After tossing six and two-thirds innings and a win over the Oakland A's, the Twins decided the Garcia era was officially over and sent him over to the Bronx to acquire the Yankees' number 25 prospect, Zach Littell. He would toss some quality innings for Minnesota, though his best work came in 2021 
2021 for the Giants. As for Garcia, he struggled in the Bronx but ate up a valuable amount of innings for a playoff pushing team in the Yankees. One of the far more quiet deals at the time came on July 31st, aka deadline day. The Dodgers, already an absolute juggernaut with a 74 and 31 record, the best in MLB, decided that they could use more pitching. After all, you can never have enough pitching, right? Well, maybe not. They decided to deal for longtime Pittsburgh lefty reliever Tony Watson, who had an all-star appearance on his resume. Watson was solid in the second half for the Dodgers and would go on to pitch some very meaningful playoff innings as well. But in this deal, they sent away an unranked international prospect with plenty of raw talent and potential who was still trying to figure things out in single A ball. That turned out to be O'Neill Cruz, who has turned into a modern baseball marvel, becoming the tallest shortstop in MLB history. Cruz is definitely still working out the kinks of his game, but he's poised to be an absolute star in Pittsburgh, all for the price of half of a season of Tony Watson's services. The trade deadline is crazy. That wasn't the only prospect fleece of the day, either. The team that eventually face off against those Dodgers in the World Series were the Houston Astros, and they were looking for bullpen help in any area they could get it in. There was a void for a lefty reliever on their roster, and Toronto's Francisco Liriano seemed like an ideal fit. Liriano was just fine as a starter for the last place Blue Jays, and just fine as a reliever for the eventual American League champion Houston Astros. This trade became a temporary afterthought in baseball, that is, until the debut of the player that the Blue Jays received, Houston's number 7 prospect, Teoscar Hernandez. Though their farm was definitely ranked middle of the pack, this was a gross overpay for Liriano, as Hernandez quickly developed into a fearsome slugger in the middle of the Blue Jays' lineup. An all-star nod, two silver sluggers, and over 120 career home runs later, this has become one of the most lopsided deals of this trade deadline and in trade history. One team that didn't overpay for an even better relief arm was the Boston Red Sox, who were a half game behind the Yankees for the AL East lead on deadline day. They dealt for Addison Reed from the Mets, who was originally acquired on their 2015 World Series run, and put up his best career numbers in Queens. The Red Sox dealt a trio of prospect arms for Reed, who pitched well in Boston in his half season there. The Mets received their number 21, number 24, and an unranked prospect, and none of them would really improve the team in the immediate window. It did take him a while, but Steven Nagosik looks to be the best piece received in this deal, as he's really come into his own five years later out of the bullpen for the 2022 club. But the final two deals of this year's deadline were definitely the biggest, and were both for the two biggest starting pitchers on the market. After acquiring Garrett Cooper, Todd Frazier, David Robertson, Tommy Canely, and Jaime Garcia, the Yankees were still not done, and saved their biggest package for last. They'd be the surprise winner of the Sonny Gray sweepstakes, as the A's went into full blow-up mode in 2017. Gray had previously made an all-star team and placed third in Cy Young voting, and had plenty of deadline suitors. He ended up in the Bronx, but admittedly struggled in his year and a half in pinstripes. Many thought it was the environment environment or maybe his attitude, but the pairing never really seemed to work out the ways the Yankees had envisioned, though he did pitch valuable innings in the home stretch of 2017. The A's received what was thought to be a massive prospect haul in this deal, but in the end, this trade didn't really work out for either side. Mateo and Fowler have bounced around Major League ball clubs, with the former finding a home on the 2022 Orioles. The best of this return was definitely Caprellian, who has pitched to the equivalent of a full big league season in his time with the A's, and certainly has the capability to improve. But once again, the Dodgers took center stage, as the best team in baseball got even scarier. Despite having an impressive rotation consisting of three-time Cy Young Clayton Kershaw, career year haver and all-star Alex Wood, and overseas superstars Kenta Maeda and Hyunjin Ryu, the Dodgers still felt the need to improve this rotation. Enter Yu Darvish. It had been rumored since the start of the season that if the Rangers failed to return to the playoffs, that Yu Darvish could become the most lucrative trade deadline piece in years. And, sitting five games under 500 at the deadline, this dream was about to become a reality. The Dodgers secured Darvish in the blockbuster of the year, Darvish did well for the Dodgers as a rental and won his first two playoff starts before getting blown up by the Astros in that year's World Series. Wonder why that happened. The Rangers were thought to be getting a serious haul in return for this prize piece, as they did receive the Dodgers' number 4 prospect, Willie Calhoun, in addition to two unranked prospects who never ended up reaching the show. Calhoun never panned out the way that the Rangers had thought he might, putting up mediocre offensive numbers and requesting a trade out of Texas in 2022. He now plays for the Giants' AAA affiliate. There was also one more deal, but it came after the trade deadline. This is a kind of deal that actually isn't allowed to happen anymore, a waiver trade. The lowly Detroit Tigers who sold off everybody before, including J.D. Martinez to the Diamondbacks, also put Justin Upton on waivers and sent him out of town. Last but not least on their big list was longtime ace Justin Verlander. All the way on August 31st, a full month after the original deadline, Justin Verlander finally got his wish. He was able to leave the Tigers and play for a contender by waiving the no-trade 
trade clause in his contract, and that contender was the Houston Astros. They had a disappointing deadline where they only acquired Francisco Liriano, but this really good team got even better by acquiring a full-fledged ace. Verlander was spectacular for them down the stretch and an integral piece to their eventual World Series victory. And because of the abrupt nature of the deal and the quick timing of it all, the package that the Tigers got in return wasn't very impressive at all. The best piece that came from it was Jake Rogers, but he's currently out for the season with Tommy John surgery. As for the Astros, they've enjoyed Verlander's services for the past five years, making them a clear winner in this odd deal. And that wraps up the 2017 trade deadline, a flurry of crazy moves that started three weeks out from the deadline and went all the way to the finish line. What can we learn from this deadline? Well, one, maybe don't prospect hug. A lot of these deals saw highly rated prospects move on from organizations, with a lot of them not really finding sustained productivity at the big league level. For every Pablo Lopez, there is a Dustin Fowler. Two, the trade deadline is good fun, but it doesn't go crazy like this every year. So though things have been relatively quiet at this year's deadline so far, that is at the recording of this video, there's still a legitimate chance things could pop off in the next few days. This frenzy is going to be crazy, with some huge names being floated around right now. Buckle up, baseball fans. It should be some good fun. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I will see you guys next time.